Plunging into the ocean is awful. Landing on a runway is really nice, affirmed the CEO of Sierra Space before the public. Yes, and in reality, this statement is absolutely true. Who wouldn't want the return journey from space to feel like sitting on a plane that lands gently? And that seems to be on the verge of becoming a reality, as Dream Chaser, Sierra Space's most precious gem after over a decade of development and overcoming many events causing delays, is finally taking a significant step towards the first launch of its life. The space plane is back. All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Dream Chaser is a leap forward in space technology, heralded as the world's sole commercial runway-capable space plane. Supported by a substantial contract from NASA to resupply the International Space Station, after decades of planning, technical expertise, and meticulous testing, its first test article has now officially been completed, signaling a significant step towards realizing the vision of Sierra Space, the company directly responsible for manufacturing this Dream Space vehicle. The venerable Dream Chaser has taken a step closer to its highly anticipated maiden flight, which is planned for April next year, a moment long awaited by space enthusiasts. For the first time on May 31st, the company announced that it had powered up the space plane in its assembly facility, feeding electrical power into the vehicle that in space would be generated by its solar panels and turning on flight computers and other components. This is a milestone that points to the future and is a key moment in a long journey for Dream Chaser, said Tom Weiss, chief executive of Sierra Space, in a statement about the test. The test will come as the company prepares to ship the first Dream Chaser called Tenacity to NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio, the former Plumbrook station, in the coming weeks. The agency will conduct the vehicle test over a period ranging from one to three months. During this time, engineers will test the space plane's ability to withstand the vibrations and acoustics of a rocket launch, as well as the temperature extremes it'll experience during flight. The space plane will be placed inside a giant thermal vacuum chamber before shipping to Cape Canaveral for final launch preparations. Sierra Space did not disclose a schedule for those milestones. Speaking during a panel at the 38th Space Symposium in April, Jenna Cavandi, president of Sierra Space, said Dream Chaser would ship to the test facility in the July timeframe. She said the vehicle would be tested there for a few months before shipping to Florida. We should be ready to go by the end of this year, she said of launch plans for Dream Chaser. At its Colorado headquarters, the first Dream Chaser spacecraft designed to enter orbit is taking on an outward appearance. Its folding wings and fuselage are covered with custom tiles to shield the spacecraft's composite structure from the scorching heat of re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. It has a landing section, and technicians will go around the vehicle to complete the finishing stages before it departs the factory. Inside the spacecraft, workers are installing the final pipes for the environmental control system, which will help maintain a pressurized environment inside the Dream Chaser for astronauts at the ISS. Dream Chaser's current role is, at least for now, transporting cargo to and from the research complex orbiting Earth about 385 kilometers away. It will launch atop a conventional rocket, maneuver in space like a satellite, and then land on a runway. Facing the production floor, Sierra Space has set up a mission control room where engineers will monitor and command the spacecraft while it's in orbit. At the end of the hallway, there's a mock-up model for astronauts to train on how to board the Dream Chaser, as well as pack and unpack cargo when it docks at the station. Hundreds of workers took a short time pause to receive congratulations from the leaders at Sierra Space. Dream Chaser is that revolutionary product. What do you say to a group of people who've actually done all the work, who've put in the hours, who've put in the blood, sweat, and tears to make something like this happen other than just say, thank you. You guys have done an outstanding job. We're almost done with everything, Angie Wise, Sierra Space's chief safety officer, said. We're finishing all the closeout panels. We're essentially getting it ready for shipping. We checked out the landing gear. We're going to put everything back in, stow it, and then move it on to transport fixture and get it out of here. NASA engineers are reviewing Sierra Space data products, and government and contractor teams are performing joint tests to ensure it's safe for Dream Chaser to approach the space station, home to seven people. Why said Sierra Space is in Phase 3 of NASA's three-part safety review process? Undeniably, Dream Chaser is a neat spacecraft, and its story is quite remarkable. It embodies a vision of the future of space travel, drawing inspirations from the dawn of the space age and combining elements of rockets and airplanes. Therefore, Dream Chaser tenacity boasts distinctive features unlike any traditional spacecraft. Its compact size, measuring 30 feet or 9 meters in length, emphasizes a commitment to efficiency without compromising functionality. 
the incorporation of folding wings further enhances its adaptability, allowing Dream Chaser to be stowed inside a 5-meter payload fairing during launch. This feature not only reduces ascent loads, but also protects against debris, making the space plane significantly more flexible and versatile. The space plane boasts a lifting body design demonstrated during a successful test flight over the California desert, enabling autonomous deployment of landing gear and precise touchdown on runways, an embodiment of the space plane's adaptability. Adding to Dream Chaser's capability is the introduction of the Shooting Star Cargo Module, a testament to Sierra Space's commitment to efficient cargo transport. This flexible 15-ton module serves as an attachment to the Dream Chaser space plane, enhancing its cargo-carrying capacity and expanding its utility for various mission profiles. With the help of Shooting Star, Dream Chaser can deliver up to 12,000 pounds of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to lower orbits, underscoring its versatility and contribution to future space logistics. Furthermore, Dream Chaser Tenacity features a state-of-the-art heat shield, representing a significant leap forward from the space shuttle program. Sierra space engineers have employed modern manufacturing techniques to enhance this strength and reduce the cost of thousands of thermal protection system tiles. These tiles, measuring 10 inches by 10 inches, are not only larger, but also stronger and lighter than their shuttle counterparts. The use of innovative materials and manufacturing methods aim to improve reliability and ease of refurbishment, addressing challenges encountered during the shuttle era. This commitment to technological advancement in the heat shield of Sierra Space ensures safe entry, descent, and runway landings for both crewed and cargo missions aboard Dream Chaser Tenacity. The commercial spaceflight industry may not be too focused on space planes as companies race to design fully reusable rockets, but space planes do have the advantage of a smooth landing on their way back down to Earth. In terms of those exact advantages, space planes offer safety, efficiency, operational flexibility, and potential for future commercial opportunities. For its debut flight, Tenacity will ride atop ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket. The space plane is scheduled for the rocket's second mission, although Vulcan is yet to fly for the first time due to several delays. The space plane is tentatively slated for an April launch, but that still depends on the rocket's first test flight. The Dream Chaser team will be watching closely as United Launch Alliance launches its first Vulcan rocket, a mission now slated for December. In the future, Sierra Space also wants to launch Crew Dragon Dream Chaser missions to its space station, as opposed to the Orbital Reef Space Station, which it's designing in collaboration with Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, a relationship that appears to be in doubt. In summary, if everything unfolds smoothly as planned and Dream Chaser succeeds, it will be a significant milestone. The space industry envisions a potentially transformative impact on space transportation. The success of Dream Chaser could mark the revival of regular space plane missions, a concept not witnessed since the space shuttle ceased operations in 2011. Furthermore, Dream Chaser's success may foster collaboration and partnership within the industry. As Sierra Space demonstrates the viability of its spacecraft, other entities may seek to leverage similar technologies, promoting innovation and competition. In turn, this could lead to a more dynamic and robust space industry ecosystem, driving advancements in exploration and space transportation. A bright future awaits this dream spacecraft. Where will it go? Let's wait and see together. The most dangerous part of spaceflight is leaving Earth, the launch. The second most dangerous part is when a spacecraft has to decelerate and survive the fiery heat of re-entry while returning to Earth. Objects coming back from space are traveling at many times Mach speed, faster than the speed of sound, and as they do, they're compressing the air in front of them. As a result, all could be burned up as fireballs. But when asked about his descent from outer space, veteran astronaut Scott Horowitz said, It's very smooth and there's no real sudden onset or force or G's that you feel. You'll notice, looking out the window, the sky starts to turn a different color. It turns kind of a light pinkish color, and then it gets kind of a deeper pinkish red. And then it turns red and orange. And what you realize is you're looking from the inside of a fireball outward. You're inside the air that's being ripped apart as you're re-entering the atmosphere. Very little feeling, no shaking, no vibration, but you just see the heat that's being generated by the space shuttle entering the atmosphere. All of this thanks to the use of a thermal protection system, or TPS. The system may not be the most glamorous feature in a space plane, but it is one of the backbones of every mission and can lead to the difference between a safe reentry and total catastrophe. 
The TPS plays a crucial role in protecting our spaceships, as well as astronauts, from aerodynamic heating and the heat of the sun. And of course, the same is true for space planes. Special mention must be made of the Dream Chaser, a reusable space plane currently under development by Sierra Nevada Corporation, SNC. Dream Chaser was selected by NASA to provide cargo delivery, return, and disposal service for the space station under the Commercial Resupply Service CRS-2 contract. It will provide a minimum of six cargo missions to and from the space station, carrying critical supplies like food, water, and science experiments, and return to Earth with a gentle runway land. Dream Chaser can gently return critical cargo at less than 1.5 Gs. The vehicle is designed for high reusability, reducing overall cost and a quick turnaround between missions. The ability to launch on top of multiple launch vehicles and land at a variety of approved runways makes Dream Chaser a flexible option for reliable transportation. As it prepares for its first journey in just a few short months, all eyes are focused on the intricate heat shield that covers almost the entire space plane. The TPS comprises a coating made of various heat-resistant materials capable of withstanding temperatures of up to 1,650 degrees Celsius 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. In the case of both the Space Shuttle Orbiter and Dream Chaser, this represents a sophisticated protection system consisting of fiberglass-based tiles and thermal protective blankets perfectly fitted to safeguard the space plane. In addition to protecting the vehicle during re-entry, it also helps normalize the temperature inside the spacecraft when exposed to direct sunlight. Temperatures can reach up to 120 degrees Celsius 250 degrees Fahrenheit during the day in orbit. These tiles can aid in maintaining a stable temperature for experiments and ultimately for humans inside. Notably, Dream Chaser incorporates a few areas without tiles due to the presence of thrusters. Sierra Space recently highlighted the challenges faced by Dream Chaser's forward dome thrusters, which will encounter some of the highest temperatures during re-entry. These thrusters, integral for guiding Dream Chaser during docking with the space station, work in conjunction with the tiles to withstand the formidable heat and forces during re-entry. Dubbed a mini space shuttle, Dream Chaser takes pride in its compact size, a standout feature that sets it apart in the realm of space exploration. Therefore, Dream Chaser has about 2,000 TPS tiles compared to the 24,000 tiles used on the space shuttle. These tiles seamlessly wrap around the vehicle, covering its sides, top, bottom, and various control surfaces. Recent images showcase the intricate progress of this purpose, emphasizing the importance of each tile's precise fit to the unique and rounded body of Dream Chaser. Although Dream Chaser requires fewer tiles due to its smaller size, the tiles themselves are larger. Dream Chaser's tiles are approximately 10 by 10 inches, while the tiles used on the space shuttle were about 6 by 6 inches. This allows for the use of fewer tiles overall and helps meet all micrometeoroid orbital debris requirements to ensure the integrity of the TPS for cargo transport, landing, and safe runway landings, as well as potential crew missions. On Dream Chaser, it has two areas in black and white. Sierra Space states the main difference between these two types is a special additive for the outer coating layer. The white tiles, strategically positioned, serve as effective reflectors, deflecting a significant portion of the sun's heat away from the Dream Chaser while in orbit. This intelligent distribution helps in keeping the components within the space plane cooler, contributing to the overall thermal regulations of the space plane. Conversely, the black tiles interspersed absorb and dissipate heat during re-entry, providing a defense against the intense forces and temperatures encountered in the Earth's atmosphere. The location of these tiles is carefully determined by the space plane's design. By placing the tiles on specific areas of the vehicle, engineers have created an optimized system for managing heat, reducing the strain on components, and enhancing the overall efficiency of Dream Chaser's thermal protection. This is a smart choice that balances the aesthetic appeal with technical precision. Moreover, the tiles on Dream Chaser use room temperature vulcanizing silicone, RTV, to ensure that each tile remains bonded to the vehicle. Silicone material can withstand higher temperatures, making it ideal for use in this context. 
Each tile undergoes individual pull testing to prevent issues such as tile detachment, a problem that occurred early in the space shuttle program. When workers first attempted to ferry the Space Shuttle Columbia to the Kennedy Space Center in 1979 atop the back of a 747, hundreds of TPS tiles fell off the space plane during the initial stages of the flight, simply due to aerodynamic forces and airflow. Had this happened during launch instead of the ferry flight, it could have led to catastrophic consequences for Columbia and its two-person crew. Indeed, when Columbia embarked on the historic STS-1 mission on April 12, 1981, a few TPS tiles unexpectedly dislodged during launch. Fortunately, the absent tiles were located in areas of the space plane that could withstand atmospheric re-entry even without them. Sierra Nevada, drawing from the 30-year, 135-flight legacy of the shuttle program and its TPS bonding best practices, has seamlessly integrated these lessons into the development of Dream Chaser. Leveraging the invaluable insights gained from the shuttle's extensive history, Sierra Nevada engineers have undertaken a comprehensive update of Dream Chaser's TPS tiles. In a significant milestone in 2015, SNC successfully concluded crucial TPS material development tests for the Dream Chaser space plane. These tests, conducted at NASA's Ames Research Center and Johnson Space Center through reimmersible Space Act agreements, provided indispensable data supporting the TPS subsystem's critical design review and validating the manufacturing readiness of Dream Chaser's TPS. The comprehensive testing program included over 100 arc jet cycles and radiant heat tests at Johnson's Radiant Heat Test Facility and Ames's Aerodynamic Heating Facility. These tests not only supported the thermal characterization of the development TPS materials, but also contributed vital information for thermal modeling analysis and TPS sizing. The subsequent AHF ArcJet tests, emulating conditions akin to Dream Chaser's environment, further solidified SNC's confidence in certifying the manufacturing capability of the high-temperature material known as Tufrock. Highlighting their commitment to safety, the former corporate vice president of SNC Space Systems, Mark N. Serangelo, emphasized the importance of collaborating with NASA institutions like Johnson and Ames, leveraging their infrastructure, materials, and expertise to refine and customize Dream Chaser's TPS. The result is a TPS that is not only lighter, stronger, and more efficient than previous generations, but also one that surpasses all mission requirements. Looking ahead to its first launch, Dream Chaser Tenacity, a cargo vehicle, is scheduled for a potential liftoff in early 2024 via the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket. The final testing of the test article, a crucial step before flight readiness, is nearing completion. Sierra Space's dedication to innovation is underscored by the numerous advancements implemented in the space plane, all of which will face the ultimate test in a real flight environment. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.